Hi everyone, let's get right into a reading and see what the cards want to say. So this may or may not be your story. I do channel multiple energy groups on here. If this one doesn't resonate, there might be another one on my channel that does. There's like there's quite a few different energy groups on here. I mean there's continuous storylines, but I think there's yeah. All right, let's get into it. Happiness, warmth, light. I appreciate your comments too. I appreciate the support. Pride and stubbornness. Pause, reflection, rest. Open, honest communication message. The energy I get from this is I feel like this is a connection where it's like you guys both love each other. You both miss each other, but you're both being kind of prideful and stubborn. I feel like there's miscommunication and there's some kind of conflict here. It's like you guys both feel the same way about each other, but you're not wanting to admit your feelings. It's like they don't want to admit defeat. You don't want to admit defeat. You're both each other's happiness and warmth and light. There's a very strong uh, soulmate connection here, or twin flame connection. Something about it is very high vibrational, very... Uh, very pure, very light. It's like you guys are the light in each other's lives. I feel like someone's going to recognize that you guys aren't going to get anywhere, though, if you continue on this way. Because it's like you both want to be next to each other. You both want to be close to each other, but you're not talking. Neither of you, you're both very prideful. Neither of you are willing to budge. Neither, maybe you both owe each other an apology, but neither one of you are willing to be the first one to put yourselves out there to say sorry first. I feel like somebody here is going to pause. They're going to reflect on this and they're going to send a message because they're realizing that you guys could play this game forever. It's like you guys are giving each other the silent treatment right now. Like you guys want to talk, but you're not. You miss each other, but you're not talking. You're playing this kind of mental game with each other. Someone's going to just break and be like, you know, I'm tired of this. Like, like what are we doing? Tell me more about this. Yeah, someone's going to make a move. Hidden truth. I feel like someone's going to take the mask off and expose feelings for you they might even it might be on social media they might even want to go public with you finance why finances and career oh i feel like maybe on social media they're trying to make it seem like they're really uh just doing well like they're not thinking about you they're focused on themselves on their money on their career their hobbies this could even be a past life cycle that you guys are repeating where it's like you guys. There might be resentment that stems from past lives and you guys need to kind of sort through that energy. Let's see here. Yeah, it's like they want to talk, but they're afraid of rejection and they keep overthinking it. They keep overthinking it. They sort of just have to choose between you and their love of power, of control. Do they, here we go, shyness, fear, rejection, overthinking. It's like, sorry, hold on. It's like, do they want to be in control? Do they want to be dominant? Do they want to be prideful? Do they want to be right all the time? Or do they want love? There's some kind of miscommunication. Toxicity. We're going to get into this with tarot, actually, because I think this, these cards can only... I think the tarot is going to be more descript when it comes to this. Okay, that energy that we were picking up, what is that about? The miscommunication. What is this This argument, this, this distance? What is this about? What's going on here? Oops, I had the cards upside down. <laughs> Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Wands. The Hierophant. Okay. 
I feel like someone in this situation felt rejected. They felt like they were really standing their ground. They were fighting for something. They wanted some kind of commitment here. They were waiting for this to come into fruition. And I feel like it just didn't. It ended in heartbreak and loss and disappointment. The hangs man, the empress. And I feel like whoever it was that went through this loss... Uh, went through a bit of a transformation. They they have a new perspective now. It's like this person's seeing themselves as the empress. They're really focusing on themselves now and not so much on the... It's like they're focusing on finances or career, on, on worldly things. Why the king of cups? Strength. King of wands. The wheel of fortune. Nine of Wands, Six of Cups. Bear with me, guys. Hold on. Let me get the storyline here. Interesting energy. Give me just a minute. I feel like what the miscommunication might have been is for some, I feel like you are waiting for them. And I feel like the issue is they were waiting for you too. As I feel like you felt rejected. At some point, it's like you felt like this wasn't going anywhere. I think you're also used to more masculine men. You're used to men that are more assertive. You're used to men that pursue you. And you like men that pursue you. You see yourself as the empress. I mean, you are the empress. You're the queen of wands, too. And I feel like this person didn't pursue you. This person might be used to women pursuing them. They might be... You guys... It's like you guys are both used to people chasing you. And I feel like that could have been when that miscommunication came in. Because I feel like, I feel like at some point it's like you waited and waited and waited for a commitment, for an apology, for a love offer, for this person to tell you how they feel, for this person to step up and be in a more masculine role. And I feel like this person at the same time was just waiting for you to do those things, which they shouldn't be, you know, that's kind of ridiculous. But, but yeah, they, they were, they were waiting for you to be in the masculine role. They were waiting for you to to reach out first. They were waiting for you to confess feelings first or to start the conversation first. And so I feel like you guys were kind of just at this stalemate where no one was really talking. And I think at a certain point, it's like you had this perspective shift and you stepped into your power. You took your power back from this person. You're like, I'm done waiting on a commitment. I'm done waiting for a marriage proposal or I'm done waiting for an offer to move in together. I'm done waiting for an offer of a relationship. I'm done waiting for them to express feelings. I'm just not doing this anymore. I feel... And I feel like you stepping into your power has kind of shifted things where it's like now this person wants to chase you. They want to fight for this. They're nostalgic over you. They're missing you. I almost feel like it's kind of ridiculous because they didn't really step up. They didn't really give you what you were wanting. They didn't really present themselves as an emperor. They didn't present themselves as an equal. They never came forward. They didn't express themselves. But they still almost have this bitterness towards you and this anger. Like they feel like you ended it. You didn't really end anything. You just, you stopped trying. You stopped fighting for them. You stopped getting yourself involved in this bullshit, bullshit situation. You know, and I feel like they waited for you to come back. It's like they saw you and it, it's like this man isn't, I think the issue is it's like this man is not very, uh, I don't know. It's like he doesn't know how to step up. That's kind of on him, you know. I just get like a very immature energy from him where it's like, what did he expect you to like be, you know, both the, 
in the masculine and the feminine role for him. Like, he expected you to do all the work, pretty much. Because it feels like you ended... Like, again, I don't think you ended things. I think you just stopped trying. I think to him it felt like an ending or it felt like a betrayal. To you, you were just like, obviously the situation's not going anywhere. This person's not a real man. They're not going to step up. They're not going to commit to me. They're not going to express feelings. I'm the empress. I'm the queen of wands. I want, I want something else. I want someone that's going to love me properly. I want someone who is going to step up into a masculine role and pursue me and commit to me. Um, this person might not have even realized your thought process though they might have just felt like you weren't interested or like you just like what's wrong with this person it just feels like they again I think they're used to having people chase them they're used to women chasing chasing them which it's it's like I don't know I personally think that that the man should I mean I think women are equal to men in every way don't get me wrong but I think that the man should be the pursuer. I think that's like the most attractive thing when like the man steps up and actually does, you know, the pursuing. Not that a woman should play hard to get or play games, but it, it's like he should show interest, especially if she's like an empress, queen of wands. You can't just expect someone like that. Like she's confident. She's not going to chase anybody. She's not going to she's not going to do all that. She knows what she deserves. She's going to she's only going to entertain the, t the kind of men that step up and go towards her and express themselves and court her and and really put the effort into her um it's like this man wanted you to like treat him like a little princess and and you you court him like you you know what i mean it's just i don't know it's just kind of a weird energy um it's like he wanted you to be the one texting him every morning or he wanted you to be the one taking him on dates he wanted you to be the one it's like he wants to be in the feminine role in a relationship, honestly, is what I feel. Um, but yeah, you weren't having any of that. I think, I think, I don't know, I just get like a spoiled energy from this man. It's like he's so, there's something very immature and spoiled about his energy. There's something about it that it's, it's like, like he's used to having women chase him and sometimes he'll play games and hurt them and ignore them and he's used to that. He doesn't even see anything wrong with it, you know? And it's like, I don't know, like a decent man is going to see something wrong with a woman having to do all the work. Like a decent man is not going to feel right about a woman like having to, to play both roles and having to take care of everything for him because he doesn't know how to do it himself. Um, I mean, the love is there. It feels like the love is there. It feels like, again, it feels like she didn't really end it. It feels like she just kind of was like, okay, this is, you know, he's not doing anything. Okay, he's probably not interested or he's he's not. It, you just kind of gave up on the situation. They felt betrayed by that, though. They felt, I think almost like this person might have even played games to try to get you to chase them and try, try to get you to be in the, the role of the emperor instead of the empress and you're like oh no they, no thank you like i'm not i'm not doing that we're not we're not doing that we're not playing those games um and i think they almost felt like you just must not it's like you weren't willing to play games and instead of just being mature enough to be like oh maybe she's you know maybe she's a mature woman that doesn't play those kind of games he, he just thought, oh, she must not be interested in me because all these other women like those games. All these other women chase me when I play hard to get it. Why wouldn't she do the same thing? Like, like he doesn't understand it. He doesn't get how people work. Um, just very immature energy. But yeah, he felt betrayed by this ending and he felt it's like he was waiting for her to step up and come back. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm the empress. I'm not the emperor. I'm not going to chase you. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not chasing anybody. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it. Um, I think like, in, I feel like information comes through with a justice card. I think information came through that it wasn't that she wasn't interested in him. It wasn't that she didn't love him. It was just that she was not willing to play those games with him. And she was not willing to take on a masculine role in the relationship. You know, she probably was upset by this. She probably really waited for him and hoped that he would step up and pursue her and make an effort and express his feelings. But she wasn't about to do those things for him if he wasn't doing it himself. You know, so there was this period of silence, I think. 
And, you know, he took that as her not being interested, but it's like, I think he's going to learn. Someone's going to tell him something's going to come through. That's going to show him that, um, you know, she, she was hoping that he would step up, that she wasn't, it wasn't, she's not like the other girls that he's dated. She's not, she's not insecure like that. She's not going to do all that with him. Um, Or he might have just even not been treating her well. He might have even just been, like, like I don't know, like, playing hard to get or playing games. And I feel like she was just really turned off by that. She's like, I'm not even going to engage. I'm not even going to, like, I'm just going to sit here on my throne. I'm not even going to entertain those those games. Like, if you don't see my worth, if you don't pursue me, if you don't step up, then I don't I don't want it. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Ugh. Let's see. He wants to move things from rough waters to calmer waters, but he's kind of afraid that she's a queen of swords now, that she's going to be closed off. He's afraid of conflict, drama, fights. He might be afraid of... I'm hearing he's afraid of her mouth. He's afraid of her temper or her mouth. He's afraid of what she's going to say. He's afraid of her confidence, but I don't... I don't know. I mean, I think there is love here between you two, but I also feel like this person's just so mature and childish, and there's there's not... You guys both want to be in the feminine role in the relationship, which is the issue. And I'm not, I hope, I hope when I say like feminine role, you're not, I'm not talking about like being a good little housewife and getting, being in the kitchen or whatever. I'm not talking about that. Feminine energy is just as powerful as masculine energy. Feminine powerful, feminine energy is incredibly powerful, but the feminine energy is, is receptive. She, she manifests things. She's, she brings things to her. Whereas the masculine energy goes forward and he he pursues those things. He puts himself out there for those things. It's like she's still putting herself out there, but she's just kind of in her power. She's just, it's like she, she's the receiver. Um, they both have their role there, but they're both, they're both, like I said, they're both equally powerful. They both balance each other out. And of course she's going to pursue things and he's, you know, and he's going to be receptive in other ways. There's, there's a mutual give and take there. But she's not going to be like, she's not going to text him every morning, text him every morning and, and be the one to text first. She's not going to be the one to plan dates all the time. She's not going to be the one to, um, she's not going to be in the masculine role. So that's the issue between you guys is you both want to be in the feminine role. You might have found out about a third party and they're afraid that you know about it and they, yeah. The moon, three of cups, they're afraid of this conflict. They're afraid of this conflict with you. They're seeing you as the queen of cups. Like they're seeing you as the one that they want this ten of pentacles with, this success with. I don't know if this person's dominant enough though. I don't know if they're really assertive enough for you. Hmm. And we all have masculine and feminine energies. Like we need both. You know what I mean? Like we all need both. But I just feel like this person's really in there. Like it's, it's just like there's there's a very weak masculine side. They they don't have a very strong assertive side. I feel like this person's trying to come back in though. They're wanting to come back in. It's like there's just this period of silence between you guys for so long, and I, I feel like they're under they're looking they misunderstood that there was miscommunication there. Now they're looking at it and they're like, oh wait a minute, like she just wanted me to step up. She wasn't like rejecting me. Yeah, she had just had it all she could handle. She ten of wands is the breaking point. She was done. She was done trying. She was done waiting for him. She was done with the commitment issues, whatever it was. It's like he was coming forward, but just too slowly. It's like he was slowly working on himself to give someone a stable offer, but it just took too long. I mean, there is, I, I do feel like there is mutual love here, but I don't feel like the feminine here really believes in him. I don't think she really sees him as a real man anymore. 
So he would have a lot of work to do to prove himself to her at this point. This is what he's fantasizing about. This is what he's wanting. I just don't think she really trusts in his ability to be a protector or a provider type. Like she doesn't feel she doesn't feel like she can be safe in her feminine energy with him after everything he's done. Yeah, whatever games he played just really backfired. She was really just disgusted and turned off by that. She was really, she, you know, he he was thinking, oh, she's going to chase me like all these other girls do. She's going to panic because she, she thinks she's going to lose me. She was like, ew, you are not a man. Like, I don't know what the hell that was. Like, that's like, you are not a little bitch. I am not going to baby you. I'm not going to chase you. I don't know what that is, but I'm not doing it. Like, like she, it backfired bad. And then he was, he was kind of butthurt that his games backfired, which is pretty ridiculous. He was, he was upset that playing mind games with you didn't work on the, on you and that you detached and protected your energy instead and, and lost faith in him instead of fighting harder for him. Like he expected you to do. Yeah. He thought, he thought it, it went the opposite direction. He really thought you would try even harder. And you were just like, oh, no, this is like the biggest turnoff for me. I am you, you might have lost a lot of respect for him, a lot of interest in him. It might be very hard for you to even see him in a masculine role at this point because of what all of just that kind of behavior. Um, is he wrecking? So what is he realizing right now? What's what's going on? Truth and clarity. He's realizing something. <laughs> I think he's realizing if he's been a fuck boy and been messing around with other girls, I think he's also realizing it's like if there is a third party, he's very lonely with the third party right now. He's realizing there's no fulfillment there. There's no home there. There's nothing. It's not leading anywhere. This childish energy, these these games, these insecure women, these third parties, all this bullshit that he's caught up in. It's it's not. It's it's like it's not making him happy. He doesn't feel at home. He doesn't feel that sense of uh, community, that sense of support, you know, it's just very, it's like very shallow uh, pursuits, very surface level pursuits, but, but there's like this deep sadness in him. Yeah, he wants to be the, he wants to, he's learning, he had to learn his karmic lessons the hard way, but he's learning, he wants to be the magician and work, hmm, why the three of swords? Because he wants to build something here. He's still caught up, like he's not sure. It's like he wants to build something with you, but he's also afraid of the damage that he's caused. He's afraid that you're just going to be a queen of swords, that it's just going to be heartbreak. Because it's like you waited so long. You used to, you used to see a long-term future with him, but I don't think you do anymore. I think he, it's like he wanted other options. He wanted to play games. He wanted to, he didn't see you as the empress. And so you... He recognizes you as the empress now, but I think in the past he didn't recognize you as an empress. And so I think it's like the tables have turned. It's like now that you used to see him as your absolute everything, and then he did the same shit again and again, not appreciating you, not respecting you, not not stepping up, not courting you, not taking you on dates, not not texting you every day, not not doing shit really. Um and so I think that changed your perception of him a lot. So it's like now that he's seeing you as the empress, it's like the opposite for you where you're seeing him as, you know, you're seeing him as a child. You're seeing him as someone that's immature, someone that's 
you know, a connection that only leads to heartbreak, someone that's only going to hurt you, someone that's only someone that's distrustworthy, someone that's only going to play games with you, someone that's never going to commit. It's like, even if this empress loves him, even if she has love for him, she doesn't believe in him. She doesn't trust him. She doesn't feel safe with him. She, she feels like it's always just going to be the same heartbreak in the end for her, you know, and he hasn't given her reason to believe in him either. So that's kind of on him as well. But yeah, he's afraid of, of your perception of him. He's afraid that if he tr does put the work in and try to build something that you're just, it's like you're, you're not gonna, you're still not going to believe in it. There's illusion here. Page of Cups. He's afraid that that little cup he has to offer isn't going to be enough. There's going to be a tower moment. Or he's afraid, I think he's afraid too of you bringing up the past. It's like, but you know what? You should bring up the past to a degree, honestly, because it's something that needs to be talked about. He can't just come in, you know, this immature, childish little page and give you this tiny offer and think that you guys are just going to be good. It's like there's things, if there was cheating in the past, if there was um, mental abuse, if there was... Um, just not appreciating, you know, not appreciating your your energy, not recognizing you as the empress. That's not really something you can just sweep under the rug. That's something that has to be discussed. It's something that has to be talked about. Um, if you guys do, if you guys are to even work through it, it's like it's something that is upsetting for you. It, it's not something, it's like he just wants to ignore it. And he's thinking about it and he's like, well, She's probably not going to be willing to ignore it. She's not. She's going to want to have these conversations, and he's trying to avoid these conversations. He might also not want to admit he was wrong. He doesn't want to admit to, to third-party scenarios, even though you already know there were third parties. I don't know about this man. <laughs> I just feel like he would have to step up as the emperor. You're not gonna. I mean, I don't know. Like you, as the empress, you might be willing to to take this this cup. But I don't. I don't think. He wouldn't be able to give you a tiny offer. You know what I mean? He wouldn't be able to just be like, "Oh, let's let's you know let's hang out." You'd be like, "Okay, like what do you have to say? Like, are you are you gonna apologize? Like, are we gonna talk about things? Are you are you offering commitment? Like, what do you what do you have to offer? What are you saying? You're not gonna let him gaslight you again. You're not gonna let him sweep things under the rug. You're not gonna ignore the issues. You know, you're gonna speak your truth. You're gonna speak your peace. And he doesn't like that. Um, And honestly, a man that truly loves you too is going to take that risk for you. So it's like, yes, I do see he's kind of a, a, you know, he's afraid. He doesn't want to have those conversations. But honestly, like if someone loves you that much, if they can't see a life without you, they're going to be willing to have those uncomfortable conversations. They might not like it. They might be afraid of conflict. They might absolutely hate having those conversations. But if they genuinely love you that much and they want to get you guys back on a good path, like get you guys back on track and heal things, they're going to put themselves out there. They're going to step out of their comfort zone. They're going to apologize, even if they're not used to apologizing. They're going to have those conversations. They're going to own their shit. They're going to admit to third parties they're going to be responsible like an adult and they're going to be honest about what they've done and they're going to show regret for what they've done, you know, like they're, they're going to be willing to have those uncomfortable, serious, deep conversations and offer real commitment if they truly love you. And I think that you know that. And so I think that you're not, you're not going to be gaslit. You're not going to entertain any, any small offers here. They would have to to even have a chance to really talk to you for you to even hear them out. They're going to have to come correct. And and I think that they know that. I think that, let's see. It's, it's manipulative though because it's like this person. It's like they know that. Like they know that they have to come forward in a very strong way. They have to come forward in a masculine way. They have to come forward. They have to be assertive. They have to come correctly. They have to be honest. They have to have integrity. 
They have to actually give you something solid to work with. You're not going to fill in the blanks for them. You're not going to make excuses for them again. They would have to give you something legit that you can't ignore. Something like, like, hey, this is in your face. This is this is a ring. This is a commitment. This is something. This some some kind of offer. Um. If not a ring, then just you know that that offer of a of something stable at least. But I think that they're juggling. It's like they're trying to, even though they know deep down, I feel like they're in denial about it and they're trying to find loopholes still. They're trying to like, how can I come in but not have to own up to what I did? How can I come in and not have to put my pride aside and apologize? How can I come in and, you know, not have to admit that, you know, she was right the whole time. There, there were third parties involved and I just gaslit her into into trying to make her think that she was just crazy and dramatic when the whole time I had third parties. It's like they want to, they, they're trying to juggle. They're trying to, it's manipulative. Trying to find that loophole to avoid accountability. One of their karmic lessons is probably accountability, to be honest. They want success with you, but they don't want to do the work to get there. You're their wish fulfillment, but they, they don't want to have to put the... They don't want to have to step out of their comfort zone. And that's why the cycle is going to end. That's why I think, and I think for a lot of you, it's like you didn't already, there might not have been an official ending, but I think you got to that point where you're like, I'm I'm not trying anymore. I'm not putting any effort out there. I'm, you know, I'm open to whatever comes my way, whether it's this person coming forward in the correct way or whether it's someone new. I'm just, it, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not giving this so much of my time and energy anymore when they're not giving me the same in return. And I think them finding loopholes is what's going to cause this to to really just end. I mean, I think it's already ended to a degree. But, like, I almost feel like them trying to find loopholes is going to create, like, a almost like an ending of a soul contract or a, I don't know. It's like there's... Yeah, it's like this person can choose to be a king of swords, but he's going to be lonely. He's going to be left out in the cold. He's not going to... He's not going to get love as a king of swords. He can choose between being a king of swords or being a king of cups, but he can't have both. He can't have both. Hmm. Eight of wands, four of pentacles. Someone's going to out this person too. If this person comes back and they try to play the same games, I feel like it's going to be very quick that they're going to, someone's going to see through them or someone's going to tell them. So you're going to get like justice somehow. Like someone's going to tell you what they did or what they said. I keep seeing, I can't, I, so like, I know some of you watch Once Upon a Time, um, and I keep getting like, because I've been, I've been rewatching that show, and I keep getting like, sometimes I get like clips from that show that are like metaphors for what's going on, so like, you know, for those of you that watch it, like, I'm seeing this scene, like, you know, like how Rumpelstiltskin has the dagger that controls him, and he pretends like Belle has the dagger, so it's like this, this dagger that like can control him, basically. You know, it's this fantasy show and he pretends like Belle has a dagger, like he gives her like a false dagger and he thinks that he's about to win. He's about to like he, he like he's about to get everything he wants. Um, and then she discovers his secret and she takes that dagger and she. Um, she basically forces him to leave. She's like, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. It's like one of those situations where he's this man's going to think he's like winning everything, like he's got everyone tricked and it's all going to fall apart just like that. He's not. There's divine justice here. He's he's not going to be able to trick anybody. He's going to have to work together with you as a team. Yeah. I feel like you have a really hard time. This empress doesn't really trust him anymore, though. She's very guarded. She's very, like, almost feels like a victim of him. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't feel like, she doesn't feel safe with him. 
she doesn't feel like her heart's safe. She feels like he's just going to mentally abuse her, mentally torment her. You know, it's like there is there is still love here. There is still like a soulmate or twin flame connection here, but she doesn't even... It's like it's hard for her to even see it because she's so guarded from it at this point. She's got blindfolds on both these pictures. It's like the love is still here. The love is mutual, but she's not even like... It's like she's 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 just seeing all the bad. It's like it's hard for her to even tune into how much love there is there because it's just pain. It's just constant pain. It was like it was just so much pain that it's like it just kind of, you know, like she she won't she doesn't want to feel that that pain anymore. She's very guarded. So yeah, this man would have to come forward to correct if he even wants to have her as much as hear him out at this point. Um I think it depends. I don't know. I just get this like it's oh, it's like a sneaky energy and it's going to backfire on him so bad. So I just keep that energy of him like looking for loopholes. It's like he wants her back, but he doesn't want to have to do the work to deserve her and to be her equal. You know? And the thing is, like, loopholes are not going to work. It's not going to work because, honestly, even if he came back and he was like, you know, I love you, I want to commit, I'm doing things right, she still wouldn't fully trust him. She would She would probably start trying to work through things with him. She might, possibly, like, actually try to, like, work through things. But she would have, he would still have a lot of trust issues to, a lot of trust to gain back from her. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's no, not a snowball's chance in hell that he can come through with a small offer. It's like, he would have to make a very big gesture for her to even consider trying to work through this. Because why is she going to work through her fears too if he's not giving her a safe place to do so? She's not going to take that risk again. She's not going to risk it if it's not a sure deal. If it's, if it's not, if she doesn't feel loved and supported and safe, she's she's not going to come out of this energy. She's going to keep the blindfold on and, and guard herself, protect herself from that kind of heartbreak. So, yeah, I feel like I, it's, it's up in the air right now, but I, I do feel like. I mean, sadly, what I see most likely is I feel like this man is going to do the same shit. I feel like he's going to try to find a loophole and I feel like it's going to be a very tough karmic lesson for him. And I feel like it's going to end this cycle between you. But it's, it's like you guys are going to be officially done. Like you're already pretty much done. But it, it's like you're going to. Him finding him trying to find loopholes and make excuses after all he's already done is just going to make it like the final nail in the coffin. You know what I mean? Because if you just have like that tiny little chance left to, to work through things with the Empress and you, you know, like it depends on what he's going to do with that, that little tiny bit of, of energy left that he's got to work with. And if he just uses that in a manipulative way, just to try to control things, try to, you know, hold on to his pride, it, it's going to be a final ending between them. So anyway, this is what I have for you guys. I'm going to put this out there. Thank you for watching.